Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at 3D F Zephyr for photogrammetry and structure from motion 3D imaging. So we take a lot of photographs, turn them into a 3D model. We're using the free version of 3D F Zephyr, and so let's get started. I'll highlight that the user interface is not the most viewable or readable. It's quite low contrast. So let's just see if there are any tools to help us change this to start with. So tool, options, and oof, this is really, really quite hard to read. So appearance, font size. So we can increase the font size. So let's do this. And, and we can also increase the icon size. So it's going to make things all hopefully a little bit more viewable and easier to read. I don't see any options to change the colours. Okay. Don't appear to have changed much so far. So then I can maybe quit it and restart it. So with the font sizes changed, it's a bit more readable now. So that's good. So let's get started. We need to start with a new project. We get a few options to begin with and we are going to basically just take all of these off um so when we create the project it's going to create the 3d model and it's also going to try and create a texture for our 3d model so i've taken both of these there's an option to check online for pre-computed camera calibrations i'm also going to put in mask images so i can show you that feature and we have to add a folder or drop in a lot of images and so I've dropped in a lot of images from the Isabella data set that I've used in a number of other examples. Click Next. And I clicked Masking and I've actually previously done some masking here so we can see that some of these pre-existing masks have been loaded but for most of them it says not found. So let's launch Masquerade. So this is Masquerade and we can actually maybe see some of the images already have been masked. So let's go back to this one. So it actually can be really, really quick to do masking in Masquerade. And what we will want to do is make sure that this button here is selected. It will be dark if it is selected. This is auto compute to mask after each stroke. Then we can use the red to indicate that something is the foreground and I'm going to do this round about here like this and I can use the blue to indicate that something is the background okay and it's going to create a mask for me and it looks not bad I can see that I'm going to need to tidy it up a little bit and I can tidy up using I can do things something like I can just add another dot here to say this is foreground and again it will automatically compute that and I can do perhaps a few of these but then I might have to do some other steps more manually so that's looking pretty good let me just do another one here Okay, I'm still going to have to add some manually, so I'm using the Lissu tool now. And I'm going to Lissu and I'm going to select that area there. And I'm going to add that. And then if I come in here, I'm going to, I might have to do this again, hang on. Start from there and down there and add that. And I can see this little corner here is also not been included. So let me select this, add that, and then I want to get rid of some of these bits. So I could try putting in a blue dot, seeing what it does, but it might mess up other things. So it's not really made any difference. So let's try the Lasso tool. 
And I'm just going down the side of the statue here. In fact, I can see it actually messed up some of what I'd added with the previous button. So this stuff appears not to have been saved. So that, so the auto compute sort of messed up the stuff I'd previously added. So mixing manual and auto compute doesn't seem to be a good option. So let's get this bit in as well. A little bit extra here. And then I can start deleting these bits that are kind of unwanted. Let's come up here. This is where most of the mess is. I don't think we actually have to necessarily always get all of these points, but I think the more we capture, the better it's going to be. Let's remove that as well. And subtract that as well. So that's maybe good enough to be getting on with. And then we save it and move on to the next image. Now, this is what I see with the user interface is very low contrast. So, but as you mouse over them, you can maybe see them. So this is an image I've already done the mask for. And again, that's the case for the next few. And you see, sometimes you don't actually need to do a lot of strokes, but sometimes you will need to do a bit of sort of manual editing. And I think what's going to be more important is that the foreground will have to include all of the foreground. That's going to be really quite important. Whether or not you've eliminated all of the backgrounds, probably a little bit less vital. But you, you know, the better you've got this, you know, obviously it's going to allow you to get better results overall. For something like this, where in some images the background's quite noisy, it can be quite difficult to mask in a more artificial setup in a home studio. You might be able to use a white background or a neutral background that's easier to remove. Actually looks pretty good. I can see a couple of bits here where I we want to just see if I can get a bit more of this in. Yeah, that worked quite well. And then again, I'm going to lasso just to capture this bit here and all that. And like that. And I don't know how I can quite capture this. I think this is her book. I'll do. Next, if you want to view the masks and just see more clearly what is masked and what isn't, we can use this black and white view. And then as we go through the images, we can actually view them all in black and white just to check what is and is not masked. So we can change things later as well to maybe tidy up the mask and mask out more specifically what we want, make sure we've captured things. Again, quite a messy background in this image, so it's going to be very hard to get a perfect mask. Make sure we've captured all of the statues is going to be the key rule, I think. Okay, and after a while, I have finally masked all of my images. And so whichever one I click on, I can view and see that they've all been masked. Masks aren't perfect, but let's see how we get on with these. Mm -hmm. So let's refresh this and we can see that all of the images have been masked. So let's click next. Camera calibration just checks the um, properties of the images. Um, and they've all got the correct image sizes. Generally, generally, there shouldn't be any reason to modify that. Now, we have a few options here. The type of thing we're photographing. So if we've got aerial images or we've got a cityscape and buildings and cars, we've kind of got a statue. So we're going to just use general. There's also a human body type there as well and I'm just going to do this on fast just now those default and deep should get better results with deep but this will allow me to just get quicker results basically probably won't look as good but should be a little bit faster and I can go always go back and redo this with more detail 
So let's just do this one fast. Click next. Put down some point cloud creation. And again, I'm just going to do general and fast. And surface reconstruction again, general. And I'm going to stick this one on default. And texturing, default single texture and general sliver. Let's go through it. So we've got lots and lots of settings, all preset, and then it runs through all in one step. So as opposed to the default we're working with Agisoft, which is one step at a time, the default way of doing this in Zephyr is to set everything up in advance. We don't have to because there is a workflow menu that does allow you to go through and do the steps one at a time once you've loaded a project. So you can load a project and not carry out any of the steps and just then manually do them after you've you've loaded them. And that gives you more freedom to, for example, modify things in intermediate stages, such as by removing points from your point cloud before you generate the 3D model. So we don't need to do it all in one step, but that's what we're going to do just now. Okay, so my result after running Looks like one of the better results I've got um, from this data set. Faces come out, mm, it's not very high poly, but I did have some of these settings on low. The back of the seat is kind of merged in, it's not, okay, that's a separate model. There's obviously some texture stretching going on, but this is not bad given the poor image set I was working with. This is actually okay, I'm quite. Um, Happy with this overall, and there we go. And then I can file, save, save the project as a Zephyr project. So I'll do this. Is actually I've tried this before, I think this is better results than I've had before. So I'll call this Isabella 3 Zep. And I can also do file, it says it's save as. What does it that allows me to? export this uh, export menu export textured mesh export format so we can do direct upload to sketchfab or we can save it in a couple of other formats so let's do direct upload to sketchfab texture type jpeg we'll just do all of these so export i have an api key so if you've got a sketchfab account you need to set up an api key and paste that in here and you get that from sketchfab itself and I will edit the description later after I've uploaded it. Click OK. I'll click here to view your result on Sketchfab. So it's being processed. Let's come back in a few minutes and see where that is. And here we go. That was quite quick. So let's do this here. Turn a wee bit closer. Same view and well I didn't give this a name or anything so let's edit a lot of these things. Edit properties. So we can name it. Isabella V4. So let's just finish all my settings. I've got some text, titled it, and I'm going to do the texture inspection, make it a free download and that means I maintain credits for uploads. So if you are uploading lots of models, you don't want them all downloadable, you generally have to pay, but I can make this free and I'm going to keep the Creative, Con Creative Commons license and save that and go back. And so this really allows us now to compare the results from this with all of my other models of Isabella Elder. So it's not been a great set of images, uh, but that allows us to really compare, you know, the results we've got with a few different software packages from what's actually quite a limited image set.